today. Um, just a couple of announcements. And the first one, uh, sometimes at our church we like to honor people. And other times we like to mess with people. And when it's somebody's birthday, their tradition is if the birthday is on a Sunday, you're going to get honored and messed with at the same time. But when it's not on a Sunday, we usually don't do it. But for Lindy Zimmerman, who's turning 78 tomorrow, we're going to sing happy birthday to her. So. And I love the fact that we have informants in this church who rap people out even on the spot. And Debbie Moyer's birthday is tomorrow also. So could we do one more round? <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Congratulations. Happy birthday. So just a few announcements for this morning. Uh, we have a caregiver support group meeting at 945 up in the Baxter Hall. Also, if you remember the last few weeks, we've been announcing the discipleship tables in the gym to in increase the incentive to take part of that. Uh, we've set out coffee today for the first time since COVID started. So there, there is coffee brewing right now. It should be ready by the end of the service. And so we invite you to grab a cup of coffee and then sit down at one of the discipleship tables and share a time of getting to know each other, talking about the scriptures that are being used in our worship today, and have a little time to check in with each other and perhaps pray for each other and care for each other along the journey. Also, we have Sunday school starting again. It started last week. But we have two Sunday school segments every Sunday. We, we, <laughs> we have Sunday from, nine, from 9.30 to 10, and then we have another session from 11 to 11.30. And then the middle school and high school have a, a, a youth conversations from 11 to 11.30. Uh, you'll notice a few charts around the church that kind of have the map of how the Sunday morning is laid out. The worship service are actually the easiest part, but everything's designed around half-hour activities. The only exception is Pastor Dan Leoy's class is an hour long. It starts at 10 o'clock upstairs in the adult ed room. I think that's enough announcements to get us started. Let's go ahead and stand and join in the order of confession and forgiveness as we come into the presence of our living God. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God who is faithful and just will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you, and for his sake, God forgives all your sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's join in singing together our opening hymn.
sing. Praise him, our almighty King. Praise him, angel hosts above, ever bright and fair in love. Sun and moon, lift up your voice. Night and stars in God rejoice. Warriors fighting for the Lord, prophets burning with his word. Those to whom the arts belong, add their voices to the song. Kings of knowledge and of law, to the glorious circle draw. All who work and all who wait, sing the Lord is good and great. Men and women, young and old, raise the anthem loud and bold. And let children's happy hearts in this worship take their parts. From the north to southern pole, let the mighty chorus roll. Holy, holy, holy one, glory be to God alone. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, Comfort and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Worthy is Christ, the Lamb who was slain, whose blood set us free to be people of God. Power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and blessing and glory are his. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Let us pray together the prayer of the day. Lord God, you call us to work in your vineyard and leave no one standing idle. Set us to our task in the work of your kingdom and help us to order our lives by your wisdom. 
through your Son, Jesus Jesus Christ, Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Our first reading of scripture is from Psalm 19. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. The commandments of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The decrees of the Lord are firm, and all of them are righteous. They are more precious than gold, than much pure gold. They are sweeter than honey, than honey from the honeycomb. By them your servant is warned. In keeping them there is great reward. But who can discern their own errors? Forgive my hidden faults. Keep your servant also from willful sins. May they not rule over me. Then I will be blameless, innocent of great transgression. May these words of my mouth and this meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Here ends the reading. Our second reading is from the book of James, chapter 5. Is anyone among you in trouble? Let them pray. Is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, they will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Elijah was a human being, even as we are. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the land for three and a half years. Again he prayed, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth produced its crops. My brothers and sisters, if one of you should wander from the truth, and someone should bring that person back, remember this. Whoever turns a sinner from the error of their way will save them from death and cover over a multitude of sins. Here ends the reading. Our gospel lesson is from the Gospel of St. Mark, the ninth chapter. Teacher, said John, we saw someone driving out demons in your name and we told him to stop because he was not one of us. Do not stop him, Jesus said, for no one who does a miracle in my name can in the next moment say anything bad about me. For whoever is not against us is for us. Truly I tell you, anyone who gives you a cup of water in my name because you belong to the Messiah will certainly not lose their reward. If anyone causes one of these little ones, those who believe in me, to stumble, it would be better for them if a large millstone were hung around their neck and they were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life maimed than with two hands to go into hell where the fire never goes out. And if your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life crippled than to have two feet and be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to stumble, pluck it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into hell, where the worm that eat them do not die and the fire is not quenched. Everyone will be salted with fire. 
salt is good, but if it loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? Have salt among yourselves and be at peace with each other. This is the gospel of our Lord. Please be seated. Sisters and brothers in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Every once in a while I ask you to use your imagination as we begin our service. And uh, I'm asking you to do that today. But imagine you receive in the mail an invitation to an art display. And it's somewhat mysterious and somewhat enticing. You don't know who the artist is, but as you read the invitation, you are drawn to accept it. And as you approach the gallery and enter the doors, you're amazed that the painting before you is vast. And for a moment, you look at it and you think as though you're seeing the entire universe, all of creation displayed before you on this giant canvas. And as you step in a little closer, you remember that you, you look around and you find that there are many others who have seen and the same invitation and who have come. And you began to listen to the chatter around you. Some people in awe, some people amazed, some people by beginning to discuss, who is this artist? Who could produce such a beautiful masterpiece? But you are a little disheartened as you look around that some people are there in the presence of what might be the greatest painting ever painted, and some don't seem to care. They just seem indifferent to it. But still, you are drawn in. And the closer you get, the more you begin to realize the depth of detail in this painting. For it's not just objects and pieces of creation, but you're drawn into the full display of what the artist has made. And as you get close enough, you begin to hear voices. You begin to hear the sounds are coming from the painting. Sounds of joy and of laughter, of sorrow and of pain. And as you begin to look, you begin to see in the painting that there are those who've gathered around you also drawn in and they're watching in amazement. And some come and they take pens and they take spray cans and they take knives and they begin to nick and slash and spray on this beautiful masterpiece. And you're angered by it. You think what outrage there must be that this beautiful painting, this great display of the artist's mastery would be so abused and defaced by the work of these people who seem to have no sense. And suddenly, as you're drawn closer and deeper into the painting, you begin to realize that the painting is not something external any longer, but that you yourself are a part of it. And you look down in your hands, and one person's hand has a spray can, and the other has a razor blade, and you realize that you, too, are part of the ones that are defacing the wonder and glory of the artist's masterpiece. And you begin to be distressed as you begin to see and realize that you and all those with you, all those who are caught up in this great portrait, are guilty of defacing what the artist has made. And you begin to wonder, what will the artist do when he sees what we have done with his work? The artist will be furious the, ar the artist will come and he'll destroy us all. Perhaps he'll destroy the whole painting and begin something new, something different, something else. And you're amazed to find out that the artist himself comes and enters into the painting with you. And everywhere the artist comes, when he sees the brokenness, the slashes and the mars and the defacing of the pens and the spray cans, he comes and he touches it. And not only is the slice mended, and not only is the paint restored, but what is restored is better and more beautiful and more amazing than what was originally portrayed. And you begin to experience and the awe and wonder of the real genius of this artist 
who not only creates, but redeems and restores and makes more perfect and more beautiful what had been destroyed by sin into something good and holy again, even more beautiful than it was before. And as you are drawn to not just fear the artist or stand in awe of the artist, but to truly love the artist for what he has done, for what he has made and for what he has done in your life, you begin to listen and you can hear the artist's voice being proclaimed throughout the painting, resonating through all that has been made, that he is making all things new. And one day, all that is fallen, all that is broken, all that is wrong and destroyed, one day these things will be restored. And suddenly you have hope. You have hope no matter how bad the things are around you, no matter how ugly things look. You have heard the artist's voice. You have seen the power of his hand and your soul is set at rest because you know. I tell you, this uh, last week, um, I put together a PowerPoint for my sermon and I had a, a, a message all ready to go it was nothing like the story I just told you. But as I wrestled more and more with the intensity of Jesus' words, I mean, this is perhaps the harshest teaching that we have in the Gospels from the very mouth of our Savior, Jesus. It just reminded me, how can we find a way to explain to ourselves and to each other the magnitude of sin and what it does to us and to others and to God's creation. And how can we begin to wrap our, soul, our minds and our hearts around a God who loves us in spite of the fact that we are the ones who destroy the world that he made. We are the ones who harm each other by our pride and our selfishness and our indifference to the creator who made us and gave us life. How can we come to understand that God takes our sins so seriously that he didn't spare his own son, but willingly gave him so that all of his wrath, all of his anger at our sin would be poured out on him. And that by him we would discover the depth of the love that God has for you and for me. And we would begin to experience in our hearts, in our life, the wonder of what the creator, the master can do when he takes our brokenness, our sin and the wounds that we have received from others as well as the wounds that we have given to others. And he begins to transform them and heal them and make them new. As I was wrestling with this, I realized that what I had been working on and what I had prepared wasn't right. And as God put that analogy in my heart, I was so compelled that I, I felt like I've got to share it with you and invite you to imagine what it's like to see the big picture, to hear the whole story of the gospel of the God who spoke and brought into creation all that is and all that has ever have been, the God who breathed life into us and made us in his own image, male and female. The God who grieves because of the sins and the rebellion that we are so prone to do. And the God who loves us and came and dwelt among us and gave himself for our sin. Brothers and sisters, in Jesus we discover the true artist, the true creator. And we discover not only his power and majesty and glory and the beauty of creation, we discover the fullness of the depth of the love that he has for you and for me. And my prayer for you and for myself, for our church, our community, for this whole world, is that we would experience the wonder and the joy of Jesus' Holy Spirit dwelling in our hearts and making us new from the inside out, taking what is broken and making it beautiful again. Amen. See?
ceasing, call for songs of loudest praise. While the hope of endless glory fills my heart with joy and love, teach me ever to adore thee. May I still thy goodness prove. Here I raise my Ebenezer, hither by thy help I'm come, and I hope by thy good measure safely to arrive at home. Jesus sought me when a stranger wandering from the fold of God, he to rescue me from danger interposed his precious blood. Oh, to grace how great a debtor daily I'm constrained to be. Let that grace now like a fetter Bind my wandering heart to thee. Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, oh, take and seal it. Seal it for the courts above. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. O oh Lord our God, we come before you this day in gratitude for all that you have made and for the lives that you have given us. Father, we give you thanks for those times where we are surrounded by the beauty and wonder and majesty of your creation. And we pray that every time we see your trees and your mountains, your oceans and your deserts, Lord, that we would rejoice and praise you. Father, when we see the stars in the sky and are we reminded how you have placed each one of them there and this earth in its orbit, Lord, help us to remember who you are and your great power and your great love. We thank you, Lord, that you come to us in your power and in your love to help us in every trial and in every struggle. So today, as we gather as your people, we bring to you our brokenness. Heal us, Lord. We bring to you our sin and rebellion. Forgive us, Lord, and restore us. We bring to you, Lord, all that is wrong in our lives, all the fear and the stress and the worries that weigh our hearts down. And we ask that this day would be a day that we're restored to a new understanding of the depth of your power and the wonder of your love made perfect in Jesus our Savior. Lord, in your mercy. And Father, as your word calls us to pray for each other, when we're happy to sing and, and make music and praise you, when we're in trouble to pray to you, when we've sinned to confess to you, and you have promised in all these things to listen and to hear, to love and to help and to use your power on our behalf. So trusting in who you are and what you have promised, Lord, we lift each other into your hands today. And we pray especially for those members of our church, our families and community who need to experience the power of your healing, the comfort of your hands, the strength of your encouragement. We continue to offer our prayers and give thanks to you for the healing that you've brought to Pastor Sue and Jerry Hubbard's granddaughter, Sophie. Continue to bless her and protect her and bring healing to her and continue to minister to her parents and grandparents and their whole family. Father, we thank you for the healing that you have brought to Chad Becker. But Lord, there is a long way to go for his strength to be restored. We pray for healing for his lungs 
and for strengthening in his body. We pray for Darren Killam, for John Ritter, for Mary Ruth Helpy, for Bev Davis' daughter Sherry, for Bruce Archibald, for Chad Cassidy, for Tom Izell, for Elisa Rogers. And Lord, now we ask that you would hear the prayers and concerns that we raise to you from our own hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Father, we pray for those among us who are grieving. We continue to lift up uh, Colleen Zelmer and her family at the passing of her mother, Kathleen. We pray for them and we pray for all who grieve that you would grant us the comfort, the peace, the hope, and the strength that comes in knowing you, Lord Jesus as our comforter in this life and as the one who has promised eternal life to all who believe. Make us certain that because you live, Lord Jesus, that we too shall live and one day be reunited with those who have gone before us. Lord, in your mercy. Father, today we take time to pray for all those who part of the calling they face in this life is to care for their loved ones, for children with special needs, for parents who are now dependent on their children for care and providing. Father, we pray that you would su sustain and strengthen all those who offer their service, their heart, their homes to care for the people they love. Empower them and provide for them in every way. Lord, in your mercy. And Father, we gather in the, in the midst of difficult times where there is great division and great hostility between people. And these divisions and differences of opinions, Lord, come right into our own homes and they separate even within families. Lord, we pray for listening ears, for understanding hearts, for patience when those who disagree with us treat us poorly. We pray that you be, help us to be quick to listen and slow to speak and slow to become angry. And we lift up our nation to you. We ask for everyone who has been called and entrusted with power and authority that you would meet them in their call with wisdom and discernment and with hearts that are humble and seek to serve you and honor you. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As we come to the time of Holy Communion, we remember that on the night our Lord Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this to remember me. And after the supper, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying, take this and drink. This cup is the new covenant in my blood which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And we pray together as our Lord taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to be seated and come forward as the ushers guide you. Thank you. 
Would you please stand? May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you always in his grace. Amen. Consider all the worlds thy hands hath made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder. Thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. When through the woods and forest glades I wander, I hear the birds sing sweetly in the trees. When I look down from lofty mountain grandeur <clears throat> and hear the brook and feel the gentle breeze, then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. But when I think that God his Son not sparing sent him to die, I scarce can take it in. That on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art. sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. When Christ shall come with shout of acclamation and take me home, what joy shall fill my heart. Then I shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim, My God, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.